You're watching The Wellness Hour Live. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, uh, new treatment options or what you need to know if you've been diagnosed or a loved one has been diagnosed with liver cancer. With us, we have an interventional radiologist, an expert on the topic, Dr. Jeannie Stryker. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Always a pleasure to have you on the program. Thanks, Randy. And, uh, you know, when I think of cancer, liver cancer, I don't think of an interventional radiologist. What is your role in all of this? Well, as an interventional radiologist, there's two different forms of cancer in the liver. There's the primary called hepatocellular carcinoma, and then there's secondary, which is metastatic tumors to the liver from okay. either breast, they can be from colon, melanoma, carcinoid. And so we know that the liver is a detoxification organ. We okay. can't live without the liver. So our goal is to get in there and reduce the size of the tumors um, it's called palliative therapy, but it can also extend the quality of life of an individual. And one of the goals that I have is to get these patients earlier because one of the, one of the things that happens is, is that when a person is diagnosed with liver cancer or other forms of cancer, they see the oncologist, they see the surgeon, they see the radiation oncologist. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of like the last resort when they've used everything up, so to speak. And I'd like to see us involved earlier and work as a collaborative team so that the patient benefits from all of okay. this. Okay, and so they could ask their oncologist, I want to see an interventional radiologist. Yes. But is that there, right? There's but what a, is your role? I mean, what's the advantage? I'm not clear, I guess. What you do that they don't do. Well, an oncologist gives you an IV, or you have a port in place that gives you systemic chemotherapy. Okay. So the, the problem with the systemic chemotherapy is, it's not only going to the tumors in the liver, or you know, pancreas, breast, colon, but it's going to the healthy cells as well. Okay. So the healthy cells are dying. And we know that with that, you get fatigue and you get the side effects associated with the chemotherapeutic agent. Okay, just suppose they went to you first. Mm -hmm. What would that process be like? And what would you be able to do? Like target the cancer treatment? Absolutely. And okay. so, Randy, if you came in to see me, first thing I would do is I would go over all the, the uh, imaging that you've had performed. So a CAT scan, ultrasound, MRI, I'd show you what we're dealing with and I would tell you exactly what we're going to do. And so what I do is I go into the, um, the artery in the groin and it's just like a, think about a tree with tree branches. So one of the branches leads to the liver, one of the branches leads to the spleen, colon, okay. whatnot. So I have the ability to go into the artery with a catheter and a wire and go right directly into that blood vessel that's feeding the tumor. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's specific targeted therapy for, for say, hepatocellular carcinoma. We use something called minamycin, doxorubicin, and so we know that, that the- So you're looking at a, a monitor. I'm looking at the you TV screen. You go right screen, into whatever's I, feeding and, the liver. Yes. And or I, that cell. Yes. Because it has a blood supply. It has a blood supply. And you shoot it with this medication. I, well, or, first I delineate. I get okay. my catheter right directly into that blood vessel. It's feeding the Interesting. tumor. And then I put the chemotherapeutic agent right into it, followed by particles that cut off the blood supply. Because cancer is really smart. And it, it, its job is to create new vessels called angiogenesis. So we even have medications that help prevent angiogenesis. I, and then- Is this for living a better quality of life? I mean, is this for end stage patients? Or is this for everyone? Well, it's both because we know if we, there's another thing we can do too called RF ablation, radio frequency ablation or microwave therapy. And we know that if we have a liver tumor that's less than five centimeters in size, we can put probes in under CT guidance and we can heat that tumor. It, the, the cells heat and they die. And patients have gone to live for you know, five, seven years. But you, know, you have to get to So an interventional radiologist does this procedure. And yes. what's it called? What's, what's the term for it? Uh, we call it chemoembolization okay. or we do uh, radioembolization. So if I had an oncologist right here, who's, what could they say about what you're saying? What can an expert well, Could they disagree with what you're saying in any way? I don't think they would disagree, but, but I think from their standpoint of view as an oncologist, they're looking at systemic chemotherapy because they're thinking about microscopic metastasis. And I think if we work together as a collaborative team where the, the patient, we're looking at the patient and it's the, patient, the goal okay. to help this patient, we can work together as a team because I can go in and totally annihilate that tumor mm -hmm. with the chemoembolization and the oncologist can give lesser doses of the chemotherapeutic nice. agent 
so there's less systemic toxicity. So don't most hospitals in America have an interventional radiologist there that they would Absolutely. refer to? Yes, we do. So they're doing this now? In a lot of major centers, they are. But I mean, because the national, the, I don't want to mention their name. Are they doing it? Yes. These big cancer yes, type centers? they are. But, you, but would you say that, but not all hospitals are on board with this as a earlier therapy? Not all hospitals are on board because you have to understand radiologists don't typically see patients. They rely on referrals. And so we have to get out of that mindset and we have to remember we are physicians and surgeons and so we can see our own patients. This is why I would bring you in, go over the imaging, I have my own nurses get your, okay. your lab work uh, and, and I, would, you know, I would see you from the beginning to the procedure to the end and I would work with... So ask your oncologist I would like to get a second opinion with an uh, interventional radiologist. Yes. Is it an interventional radiologist oncologist? Yes, because there is okay. a su it is a subspecialty. So all of us do interventional radiology. Some of us um, are real passionate about the oncology aspect, and so we do more of it than some of Help our other colleagues. Help me understand colleagues. the politics here. Is there like a first-line therapy, meaning they got to do drugs first, right, radiation or chemo or whatever, then they potentially have to do something else, and then you're the last resort? I'm is that what you're saying? Yes. Is that right? Well, I don't think it's right. But I think that patients have the right to know that they have, they, they have choices. And I think that you have to lay out all, everything to the patient and let them know that this, this is something we can do for you. I can work collaboratively. And you'll work together with them. Absolutely. You're not saying don't do the other therapy. You're saying target because it, this targeted it's treatment targeted sounds better. Therapy. I mean logically and I don't know this topic it sounds better it's targeted therapy we have vaccine therapy we have molecular targeted therapy that you know that with cancer there are there are proteins okay um, and they can switch so there's certain different you know there's different functions in the cell and so the targeted therapy gets to What's that tumor really about? Interesting. What happened? Interventional radiologists, oncologists, we're out of time. We have less than a minute left. What other cancers should they see an interventional radiologist, oncologist? Well, I'd like to see, I, I would, because then I'm, I'm an optimist, I, I think patients should be seen even for neoadjuvant therapy for breast cancer. Okay. Instead of giving them systemic chemotherapy, get right into that tumor in the breast, annihilate it, and then have the surgeon resect it. Interesting. Very good. Well, you know, Dr. Stryker, always a pleasure to have you on the show. We'll have to have you back to talk about some other topics. So thanks again. Thank you. You've been watching the Wellness Hour Live. I'm Randy Hours. Up next, uh, uh, the inventor of the endoscopic brow lift has something you need to know before you even consider a facelift. We'll be right back.